here today, 4th of August, as an act of commemoration of the commencement of the First World War. It's not a celebration in any way, shape or form. This is, if you like, a reflection of a hundred years ago. During the course of the day in this church there are actually four services. The first one at 11 o'clock is to tie in with a daily act of remembrance at the National Arboretum in Warwickshire. The bell ringers at St Andrews will be ringing the bells in what will be a normal peal. We remember particularly those people who did not return, whose lives were lost on that battlefield. Four over five. There will then be the sound of the muffled bell before the start of both services. There will be the act of remembrance round the war memorial in the churchyard, conducted by Reverend John Oliver, who is chaplain to the British Legion. What we're doing today, as we remember the outbreak of the First World War, is the rushing to the colours of all those young men from all over the country with a particular vision. It was not until they got into the mire of the trenches and the awfulness of Gallipoli and places like that that the horror of war struck them. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. John will then come into church and we will dedicate the book that Penrith remembers 1914 to 18. And in your presence we bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well now the book has been blessed, people have been coming up to sign the book and, and make their entries. The book's going to be here all day, but it's very nice that people have made a start and are very appreciative of the opportunity of recording details about their forebears or friends in this way. I'm here today to enter my grandfather's name in the Book of Memories. My grandfather was Sergeant Moses Wood and he served with the 1st Battalion Gordon Highlanders. He was already a regular soldier and at the outbreak of war he was sent off to the Western Front. He didn't realise, nobody realised, that my grandmother was pregnant at the time. Unfortunately he was killed by sniper fire nine weeks later on the 26th of February. So he never lived to see the baby, my mother. In the death notice that they sent to the family there was also enclosed a very touching poem he sleeps now in a soldier's grave upon a foreign shore. No more he'll roam upon the heather hills of his native land. He fell fighting like a hero, fearless, strong and brave. But now, alas, they've laid him in a British soldier's grave. The purpose of the book is to provide um, a record of people's um, memories and commemoration of relatives and friends and acquaintances. The council is there to support people, and that's what we have um, endeavoured to do. But I think what is important is that it is the people who've done all of this. You know, the book, the events in the church, everybody has done their bit. And they've come up with, with really, I think, a, a very um, appropriate um, means of commemoration. At nine o'clock, there will be a vigil service to finish the day off with an act of quiet reflection, quiet words, music and hymns. The last of the names read from the board, please. Lawrence Harrison, Lawrence Hill, Edward Wilson, Isaac Wilson, Adam Jeffries, William Kennedy. We're actually lighting a beacon by the memorial we have in the churchyard to remind people that there is a light in this world. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's to remind us of the, the traumas and tribulations of local people, what they went through, because most of us around today have never ever experienced anything like that. That makes it all the more important that we commemorate the event, because the, the task really for us all is to make sure that nothing like that ever happens again.